everyone and welcome to Metasoft Training with Cheryl again. Today I'm going to show you how to convert your ICD-9 codes to your ICD-10 codes. This only will work if you have Metasoft version 19 and up. It will not work with the older versions of Metasoft, just FYI. So please don't try this with anything lower version 17, 16 and below. It will not work. You will not find an option on your actual system. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to open up our Metasoft. And there's two things you can do. We first, I'm going to show you how to actually set the ICD-10 um, specification. So we're going to go into tools, then down to services, and we're going to go with set ICD version. Now here is where you can set ICD-9 codes or ICD-10 codes, but you can do it in a batch versus having to go to each insurance, go into the EDI eligibility tab and choosing ICD-9 or ICD-10 from the drop down. Um, if you saw my other insurance video, I showed you how to do it individually as an insurance versus doing it as a group. If you have 30 or 40 insurances and so on, which most people do have in their system, it's just easier to come over here and set it as a group. So right now I have mine set for ICD-10, effective 10-2-2015, which means when that date comes, my system will only show me uh, ICD-10 codes that I can actually use. Now, ICD-9 codes will still be available because we know, of course, all the payers are not going to be ready. Most of them will be. So the ICD-9 codes will be there, but if I try to use the ICD-9 code after I have already set ICD-10, it's going to highlight in red. And when I go to print out my claims or send my claims, it would not allow that code to go because I have it already preset. So right now, since my system is set as ICD-10, 10-2, 2015, it's going to send ICD-9 codes until that date. Now, the way to do that is you can highlight or check every box, or I can just do select all. It checks the boxes for me. Then I want to come up here for a code set and I want to change all of my code sets to ICD-9. And as you see here, after I do that, I'm going to do update selected. So what it's, you see how it automatically changed all of them. So if I were to go into my insurance list, all of my insurances will now be set to ICD code set. And the way I did it to ICD-10 is I went down here to ICD-10 and then you do the ICD-10 effective date and then I can actually put the code, the date in, which is 10-2-2015. And then I will do update selected. Sorry, I didn't select my insurances. So I'll go here, select my insurances, then do update selected. And now I have that date there. So this is how this would actually work. So for the sake of scenario, I'm going to put it back to ICD-9 because we're not ready for ICD-10 and I'm going to do select all update and so now we're all set for ICD-9. So this is how you would change your insurances as a group because when ICD-10 take effect if you do not want to go one by one and change all your insurances you either just want to plan it out or change them as a bunch. So now I'm going to go back up here to tools go back to services and I'm going to go to create ICD-10 mappings. So when I click that, it's going to give you an introduction screen and it's telling you about the different types of mapping. So what it's going to tell you is with the one to one mapping, meaning it'll find your it'll look at your existing ICD-9 codes and then find the ICD-10 code that is most related to the ICD-9 code. That's the one to one. The other mappings will say will take your one ICD-9 code and tell you all the possibilities of ICD-10 codes that could go with that ICD-9 code because if you have looked at the ICD-10 draft you will see that it is three to four times bigger than the ICD-9 so there may be five ICD-10 codes for that one ICD-9 code that the doctor has used before so it's good to know it even though your system gives you a um a variety to choose from but you need to know which one to actually choose so it's good to kind of get some training or some classes on the, how to use the ICD-10 codes so I'm going to click my one-to-one -one mapping and on this screen you would see your list of ICD-9 codes so I'm going to come here and of course my system wants to not work as properly so let me refresh since I actually had went in and changed the codes I'm going to go back to services, go back to create ICD-10, and I'll go with the other mappings first, just show you what it looks like. So if I were to click one of these codes like fracture of the finger, do you see at the bottom it's showing me the possible ICD-10 codes? And if you notice with ICD-10 codes, it has letters 
and numbers and even has a letter after numbers. Now this format is completely different from what the billers and coders have been trained and as long as providers as well been trained on for years. This is a totally different way. And if you read the description, it is very specific. So for the IC9 code, it was closed fracture of the phalanx or phalanges of the hand unspecified. That was the code we had. We used it. We're fine with it. Well, in this, it's saying fraction of unspecified phalanx, which is just like the phalange of your fingers, of a unspecified thumb initial encounter. And this one is unspecified finger initial encounter. So you really have to specify which finger it is, and you couldn't just go with hand because there was not a specific code for finger. So very detailed. So let's look at another one. Let's do injury of the toe. If you notice with injury of the toe, we have four different codes for one. And we used to use 959.7, which is just knee, leg, ankle, or foot injury. We knew it was bundled in there somewhere. Now, nope. you need to specify whether it's the lower leg, uns uh, unspecified injury of the unspecified lower leg, other specified of unspecified ankle, initial encounter, unspecified injury of unspecified ankle. Now, to me, sounds like there is too many words there, but you have to choose it. So once you select that code, we're going to do create selected code and it tells you it was successfully created and just as an example if you look at insect bite look at all of these for insect bite we used to use one code they now have looks like at least 15 to 20 codes of specifying what kind of insect bike it is so <laughs> good luck with that emergency room and family practice so the one-to-one -one mapping which it's not showing right now because I've had it selected so we're going to do close for that and then we're going to come back over to our um, ICD-9 ICD list. And you'll see that it has the diagnosis codes here as well. And we have our ICD-10. So we're going to close this. And if you go to our insurance list, and we click on one of our insurances here, and we go to our options and codes, we see how we have it set for ICD-9 without us having to go click one by one and do it. So that is the easiest way to bundle your codes and actually change them where you'll have the ICD-9 and ICD-10. And let me show you one more way. So if I go down to ICD-9 and I actually scroll down some, here are my ICD-10 codes. Now, some of these codes, if you notice at the top, it didn't have an ICD-10 code, which means these previous ICD-9 codes, there are not ICD-10 codes created for these. So these are codes that if we're using ICD-10, you will no longer be able to use. There is a different code that you will need to use. So there's no more neck pain codes. There's not a fatigue ICD-10 code or a weight loss ICD-10 code. So um, you really have to know how to look up the ICD-10 to find a better code because these codes are here are no longer will be used in ICD-10 version. But if you look down here, here are codes that actually have ICD-10 compatibles, um, like allergies will no longer be used. But here we use uh, food poisoning. And then this is our food poison code, but it said it's read differently. Bacteria, food born, intoxication, unspecified. Okay, well, it's a mouthful, but I'm sure the system is better. We've been working on trying to get this system as a, um, a country to be made effective other countries have been using it they've been doing well with it so i'm sure we'll get around to do better as well but that's just my opinion so once you have converted set it up your mappings did your one-to-one -one, this is what you'll have so when you go on your transaction screen you will have the option to choose between ic9 or ic10 code until you actually put that effective date in and once that effective date in you will only be able to use that set of codes that you've set to be effective for that time period so uh, that is the end of this video. If you guys have any questions, you know, feel free to send me an email. But other than that, it was good training with you today. And I look forward to talking to you on another video. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.